Hey, good morning. This is Bob from Trade Genius. It's the uh, 28th of, of August and it's a Sunday morning. And I want to just do a video on the AGs um, instead of just doing a, a, a blog post. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go through all the ones that are shown as ETFs and just give you my thoughts as to where they are. You know, whether you trade those or not, or you trade them inside of DBA or JJG, at least you're going to know where my signals are telling me whether it's a buy sell or it's, if it's a short. I'm going to start off with cotton. And uh, right now cotton's in a uh, consolidation mode. And it's above the moving average, but it's below VWAP. So my expectation is, is when... Um, my signal turns uh, bright green again that those who want to should be able to get back into uh, into cotton again moving on to corn is you know corn is trying to test that that bottom and my hope is it's going to be a double bottom you know I'm in corn right now I have December futures contracts on them and um, you know, my expectation is is that 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 corn is going to move back up, and so I'm going to uh, watch to see what the next 30 days holds on corn, and if it's still just uh, dragging along here, what I'll probably do is is I will you know sell my positions and um, and consolidate my corn and my wheat into uh, into my DBA and JJG. And just follow those, be able to take my loss on the tax, and um, but still maintain my my uh, exposure to the the grains and the commodities, and then I could be in a position where I could sell uh, options against them when they get overbought, and so I can uh, just keep bringing my cost average down. So I think that's going to be my my plan if we don't get any kind of meaningful reversal here uh, going into the fall. But right now. You know, corn is pretty much washed out. You know, it, it literally, uh, it's never been cheaper. So um, it'd be stupid to sell. So that's why I'm holding right now and, and looking for uh, an opportunity to uh, to monetize it as it starts to move higher. If you're not in corn, it's probably a good time to, to take a shot at it. You know this market here i'm just really just showing you is is um the cattle market's been very difficult to trade there's literally no liquidity in anywhere in the etfs or even in the futures market so i'm just pointing it out to you that uh right now it broke you know, through the double bottom made a new lower low and uh it's you know pretty bearish right now A DBA, ironically, DBA is still higher than where I bought it here in April. Um, I bought the first time at 2003. I sold it at, at 2080. I bought it back at 2070. And uh, and so I've just been doing this wild ride with it. But believe it or not, I'm still on a cost basis. Is uh, I'm still um, profitable on DBA because the grains are the ones that are getting hit the most. And the softs are still fairly strong, and, um, and that's what gives me courage on the uh, the La Nina event. Is that the tropics are really struggling? Um, it seems to be that's where the most impact has been, and so the you'll see coffee and cocoa and sugar have been very very supportive in terms of price, and you know as the La Nina rolls through, it's going to roll up the latitudes, and that's what's going to start affecting the uh, the grains. At least that's the uh, the theory, and and that's what's happened in the past. JJG, you know, looks just like corn and wheat, and also just soybeans and JJG as well. So, I I bought this one here. I'm I'm at a pretty good loss. I'm at thirty eighty is my uh, is my my buy price, and I'm still just I'm hanging. This is a long term hold for me. And, um, and I'm fully positioned right now, <clears throat> and so I haven't sold any calls against it, but, but I'm going to start doing so. That, that, that This move is taking longer than, than my expectation, so I'm going to start bringing my cost average down. 
And here's coffee. See, coffee's been fairly supportive. It's it's just in a rising channel. They're having all kinds of problems with frost damage, and with infestation, and with uh, uh, a climate that's not been supportive of it. And so, um, you know, I'm in Joe, and um, I'm going to remain so. And and I'm just going to. Uh, I've been buying and selling this one actually. So. Uh, I'm going to look for an opportunity here to see if it breaks through 22 and before I get another sell signal on it. And if it breaks through 22, then I may hold it longer term. But I'm keeping an eye on it. That's, that's pretty much a, a long-term handle here trying to form on the uh, right side. Uh, Moo, just more illustration is this no uh, liquidity in Moo in terms of an ETF. But it just had a nice little run. And it looks like it's going to roll over for some consolidation. Probably mid-49s. MOS, I own MOS long term. I'm in it from like 25.95. And uh, we just had another move on it here. And, um, you know, I don't know how exaggerated Friday was. It seemed pretty exaggerated from a, a dollar standpoint. But um, I'll call out the next uh, buy signal on MOS. It just, look, at it's a beautiful chart to trade. And I've been holding it long term, so I haven't been putting signals out, but I think it's unfair to everybody. So I'm going to start putting out buy sell on on MLS for people to trade it because it's a nice three point range. And I think you could, we could just make a lot of money on it, just grinding it. I hold it long term, so I won't trade it personally, but I'll certainly pass it on to everybody else. Uh, Coco, this is more of an illustration for you, it, but, but if you trade in the futures market, this is a beautiful beautiful chart and I do I trade cocoa in in the futures and it just had a you know finished another nice move and um, and so it touched VWAP and held so I'm watching for the next time I get a uh, a, a buy signal on it and uh, and buy some futures contracts on it again uh, sugar's just been a beast it's just grinding 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 sugar is doing what I expected everything else to do and so we got another buy signal on sugar and uh, I only hold sugar inside a DBA I just only have so much mind space so I can't chase everything and so that's probably what's been supporting my DBA and then we have here is um, silver I put this I have it in ag but it's really kind of my my end of the world uh, uh, portfolio over here so just bear that in mind but uh, silver went down. Looks like it's touched its VWAP. It's it's in a sell right now, but it's certainly not a short. I think you, you know shorting the metals right now is unless you're really you know trading it at a very tactical level, is it's consolidating. And for those who've been waiting to get into silver, uh, and I'm waiting for a final position in silver for myself, is um, I'll, I'll buy this next uh, this next this this next buy signal. Uh, soybeans looks like corn and wheat. They're pushing it down pretty hard. One thing to bear in mind is, is that when prices go down in the futures market, the farmers have to protect themselves, so they short along with everything else. And I think the biggest example was when you saw oil. Oil just fell, 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 fell. It's because the oil producers were shorting along with the hedge funds, along with the speculators, because they're trying to protect their 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 business. And as soon as that selling abated. They're the first to turn around and get out or, or flip it long. And I think we're seeing some of that now. The the big banks and the ag companies know that the farmers want to get paid. And so they're pressing price pretty hard. And the farmers have no choice but to short their crops along with everybody else so they can protect the price point. And, and that's why I'm expecting as soon as some of this uh, uh, selling activity abates that we'll get a nice bounce back. And then wheat, of course, that that move, I think, I think that move's going to get reversed. Is I think it was just a, a sell everything day, and and we'll watch that pop back up. But I'm looking for wheat to turn right back around again. And the the wheat markets, you know, half the world had had poor harvest and half had really good harvest. It's just that the American market was very very strong, and the um, and that's where the most visibility is, and so that's where where I think you know a lot of guys get their 
their ideas about how bullish or bearish things are. What's really interesting about wheat though is, and I don't yet know because I'm one year into really, really trading these things, is that the quality of the wheat really was poor. So I think that's why you see, you know, why isn't pasta prices coming down? Why isn't bread prices coming down? Is because what we're seeing in the futures market is just standard wheat, but the hard wheat crop has, has not been as strong. And, uh, and even some of the soft wheat crops haven't been in terms of quality. It, it's being rejected and it's being bought for animal feed. So that's probably why you see the, the livestock prices coming down too. They just got cheap food to feed the animals. So really interesting to watch and, and watching the dynamics of everything. But anyway, that's the ags and that's what I'm gonna do. So in summary is, is I'm holding firm for another 30 days. If I don't get the moves I want in, in the two grain crops that I own, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out of corn and wheat and roll everything into JJG and then I'll start selling calls against it as I try to bring my cost levels down. And that's it. Bob from Trade Genius. I'll do some other videos later. Have a great day. Bye-bye.